Hello everybody, today we are going to do the first reaction video I've ever done. So I saw this video and I just wanted to see what, what was it about, how was it, and it's called I made a Minecraft biome out of real dirt and block, uh, blocks, rocks, <laughs> north of the border, go check him out. Never heard of him before, but... I just wanted to check out this video, so, yeah. Hi right, folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things. A little while ago I made a tiny Minecraft world using clay cubes, and it did pretty well. Now, given that my general sense of self-worth is tied to that little number in the corner, I figured maybe it was time I made another one. Unfortunately though, I'm all out of clay. However, like any mentally stable 30-year-old man, I happen to have lots of takeout containers full of dirt and rocks, which I think should do the trick. The only question then is how do you get these little piles of dirt and rocks into uniform Minecraft cubes? Ice cube trays. Or more specifically, tiny one by one square ice cube trays made of silicone. My first thought was just to pour the dirt into the tray, then put it in the freezer to harden. I've done this with water to make ice cubes, so I figured it should work with dirt to make dirt cubes. However, despite leaving it in overnight, it just wouldn't keep its shape. My guess is that these trays are designed for ice cubes, so they won't work properly with dirt. Nay bother, it just means that I'll need to use some kind of binding agent. I'm going to be using a two-part epoxy resin for this since I need something will dry anaerobically, meaning I need something that will cure in the absence of oxygen. I tried using Norma glue, but as the top of the cube cured, it created a seal that prevented the bottom from curing properly, leaving me with a messy, half-cured sadness cube. Fortunately, all I need to do is mix up my resin, then mix it together with whatever material I want to use. And with the resin and dirt mix, mixed. It's as simple as spreading it out onto my ice cube tray, trying my damnedest to keep the top level so that all my cubes are the same height. This is easier said than done though, and in the end there's just enough difference in the cubes to give the final product what I think has become that patented north of the border jankiness. <laughs> now because I'm using a silicone tray, the resin won't adhere to the mold and it should be nice and easy to pop out my adorable little dirt cubes. Hey, that actually looks pretty cool. With the initial dirt cube attempt a roaring success, it's time to make a bunch more using different materials. I've got little grey rocks for the grey rock blocks, I'll use little black rocks to make the coal deposits, and I'll use some green foam flock to make the foliage blocks for the trees. That's working out really good. I also made some little sandstone blocks, but never ended up using them. It was more a proof of proof of concept. <sighs> okay, let's get you ready to fight! Wait, what? Well, multi- So finally, once I'd gotten an adequate number of blocks set up, it was time to separate them so that I could start putting it all together. First things first though, I'll need to make a frame. A frame will let me build the first few levels of the cube world so that at least two sides are square to one another. I've covered them in tape so that the glue won't stick to them when I remove it from the frame, and then a couple dabs of super glue will hold it all together. And it's just a case of slowly adding each block until I've got a block base that I'm happy with. And with the last piece of the base in place, I'll set it aside to mix up some blue dye and resin. This will act as the bit of water at the bottom of my cave. Now in hindsight, I'm not sure why I added a little lake underneath since my plan was always to have a little cave system on the bottom, but I think I was probably a little high as a result of using resin and glue in a small <laughs> unventilated place. Whatever, resin is fun, and this- Stay safe guys, if you use resin, make sure that you do have a ventilated area to work with. Resin is blue, so it's extra fun. Once the resin is cured and the glue is dried, it's time to remove the side walls from my frame. Then I am free to add the rest of the wall blocks. Now I wanted to leave a hole on each of the sides so that the interior is easily viewable, so I'll build up the corners then add little bridges over the gaps. 
I found it's a lot easier to build the bridges separately than attach them as a single piece rather than trying to glue each block one at a time. Then with the bridges done, I can start filling in the larger gaps as well as adding individual blocks to give the gaps a bit of variation. Finally, before I cover the top, I'll add some more blocks inside so the walls aren't quite so flat. Then I'll flip it on its side and cover the top. Now I want the top to be covered in grassy blocks, so I'm going to need to convert some of my dirt blocks to grass blocks. To make my life a little easier, I'll use one of the ice cube trays to hold a set of blocks in place. And the grass I'm using will be one millimeter static grass, cause static grass is the tits, and one millimeter means it'll be adorably small. A thin coat of PVA glue will hold the grass in place, and the walls of the silicone tray will mean that the grass will only get applied to the tops of the blocks. Wow. That looks good. Then all that's left to do is build the final layer of the Mega Cube. Honey is a free online shopping tool that gives you savings on your favorite websites and items. You can save money. Of course, what's a Minecraft cube without some blocky trees? So to make the trunk of the tree, I paid way more than is reasonable and ordered myself some one by one centimeter balsa rods that are the exact same size as my blocks. Now I could just cut these to length and call it good, but that would be cheating and I'm not a cheater. So instead I'm going to cut it into proper little wooden cubes. Then I'll paint the cubes with the darker brown so the outside bark is dark and the inside is light. You'll never actually see this, but I think it's a nice, if meaningless, touch. Then I'm ready to assemble my tree and I'll start by gluing the pre-made foliage together. Now I made the sections of the tree separately, then I'll glue them together using some hot glue. Why hot glue? Because it's fast and I'm impatient and I'm tired of waiting for better glue to dry properly. Then the final part of the tree building process is gluing my tree trunk cubes back together. Again, I could have just cut a single piece to length, but then you'd be missing that signature wonkiness that only shoddy craftsmanship can provide. Now I did make a few more smaller trees and then I'll add some tufts of grass using these tiny grass clumps. Now I could call it here, but I feel like I need to add something else. Something living, or maybe something unliving. Mostly, I deviated from my cave plan and I don't know what to do with that water underneath, so I figured I'd just make a boat. Fortunately, the standard Minecraft boat is pretty minimal in detail, so a flat bottom and four barely attached sides and a nice coat of paint leaves me with a pretty decent looking little watercraft. Then I figured who better to pilot this cave bound vessel than a tiny cuboid skeleton. So with the various bones cut out and baked, I can start the assembly. Oh yeah, I figured if I've got the white clay to make a skeleton, then I've got the white clay to make a sheep as well. Otherwise, putting them together is pretty simple. Glue the head onto the torso, then add a bit for his butt. Then I glued the limbless torso into the boat and added the limbs. Then a quick gray wash to add some color and a couple dots and a line will give him a face. And making a sheep follows a fairly similar process. Glue his face onto his head, his head onto his body, then add his legs to his body and his feet to his legs. Then I'll give him a little brown face, a pink nose, some black eyes, and he's ready to be added to the field. It's cute. Cute, cute. And of course our skeleton in a boat gets glued into the cavernous waterways, and we're on to the glamour shots.
There you go, folks. I hope you enjoyed this one, as I thought it might be fun to do the exact same thing, but also different. Of course, some things never... Alright, guys. Well, that... That's the end of the video. I hope you liked it. This is my first reaction video, so don't, like, get mad if it's bad. But, uh, yeah, that's... That's gonna be it, I guess. I will see you next time.